you'll find me at Osterloo Park. So where is it? Well, it's in West London, in the London borough of Hounslow. And we've just had the most terrific, horrific of thunderstorms. So I think we can get rid of that now. Anyway, before the next shower comes, I'm going to pop into the house and take some photographs. Now, because the National Trust do not allow tripods, I have got to hand hold. So we'll see how the image stabilization does on the OM5 and I'm going to try and keep the ISO at 200 for quality. Also, I'm saving the files twice to RAW and JPEG. So we'll see when we get home what I can do with the images. Anyway, time for me to shoot off before the next shower comes. You can probably hear the rain dripping off the trees and onto me. So for once, yes, you can say, I'm a dream, can't you? I arrived by train using the Heathrow branch of the Piccadilly line from central London where there were more suitcases to dodge than people. The station is about half a mile from the house, which opens at 11am. I like to get in early before too many other people and photographers arrive. Just to remind you, I am using the OM5 with the 12-45 Pro lens and nothing else, except two sturdy legs instead of a tripod. They are not suitable, I'm afraid, for public exhibition, but have seen good service and get a workout every morning at home on a steep hill. I am executing some post-production in Adobe Lightroom. I am impressed how the OM5 performed in low light. Only the camera has image stabilization, not the lens, yet at half a second, the detail in the image is amazing and handheld, don't forget. I keep the camera on program mode as exposure will default to the largest aperture because of low light, but I spot metered for greater control with the aid of the finder. I save to RAW and JPEG, but you are viewing JPEG copies of the RAW files cropped from 4 times 3 aspect. Resolution is reduced to 1400 times 788 for YouTube and adjusted in Adobe Lightroom. With the tapestry room, I am anxious to contain the highlight around the lamp by not giving it too much exposure so that it spills out further into the image. So I underexpose. Noise might be a problem when bringing the dark areas back to life in Lightroom, but I think that I've got away with it. Or maybe it was due to the excellence of the camera. Because I was concentrating on spot metering for the raw file, the comparison with the processed JPEG is not helpful. Next time I will use ESP metering for a fairer test. I combine my skills in spot metering with post-production. Both are inseparably linked and based on experience and not the rulebook. So first I ignore the histogram and trust my eyes instead. I am aware that my methods are not liked in some quarters, but you know, if it works then that doesn't matter, does it? There is a drastic difference between the settings in post-production and out of camera, but the spot metering is executed in what I know I will do later in Lightroom. The rain had stopped, so time to look at the garden. The light was stronger, but still with quite a bit of contrast that needed taming. This is when I got caught in the storm, so <laughs> back to the house.
It is clear that I am enjoying using the OM5 and the 12 to 45 Pro lens, which seems to give a very sharp image. This may be due to the restricted zoom range that could be more difficult to keep with the 12 to 100 Pro lens. That has image stabilization in addition to the camera, but any doubts I had about working with the 12 to 45 without an additional stabilizer in low light were soon dispelled.